Thank you for staying with us. Uh, you are not unaware that uh, in his Christmas message titled, Let Us Turn a New Page, uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka of the Catholic Diocese of Sokoto uh, said the president will be leaving Nigerians far more vulnerable than when he assumed office on May 29, 2015, despite his many promises. And uh, his message read in part, Mr. President, sir, a Merry Christmas to you and your entire family. I speak for myself and for many Nigerians when I say we thank God he mercifully restored you to good health. We know that you are healthier now than you were before. We can see it in the spring in your steps. Thousands of miles you have continued to cover as you travel abroad. May God give you more years. I, uh, however, I also wish that Nigerians, millions of our citizens, had a chance to enjoy just a fraction of your own health by a measurable improvement in the quality of health care in our country. End of quote. What all this means for us as we build up to the elections, let's have a conversation around with Dr. Adetokumbo Pierce, who is a member of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council and Lagos State Coordinator of the Atiku Okoa Presidential Campaign Support Groups. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. We also have Ibrahim Modibo, who is a public affairs analyst. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you. Good morning, Nigerians. Yeah. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Pierce. I mean, you, are, you, you know about that story, and of course, your party has also responded, saying as far as the PDP is concerned, government has failed. But then there are those who will also re always reference some landmarks that the president has, the, this administration has achieved over the past seven, going to eight years. Well, the achievements are too little, too late when you compare uh, the failures and the problems we have. I don't think it is a surprise to anybody what uh, Bishop Kuka has said. I doubt if anybody will disagree with him. In fact, we have to thank God for people like him that are able to tell the truth to power. And hopefully the electorate will hold them accountable uh, come election time. Um, the failures have overshadowed the little achievements. I mean, Reverend Cooker talks about the health issue in Nigeria. The president can go abroad. Some people, people in his cabinet and people who are wealthy, a few people can go abroad for treatment. The health uh, industry in Nigeria basically collapsed. It's a major problem. When the president got into office, one of the things he promised was that he would do so many things, including make sure that people who are sick don't go abroad for treatment. They would take care of it here. He said he would sell out the, 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 the presidential jets. It would be economical in the way he deals with things. It would be fair. He has failed in every sector. He has failed even to tackle corruption because, frankly, I would say it here. And, you know, we can say these things. You have a problem because they may come and close your, your, your business down. But nobody can close me down. This president has been the most corrupt president in the history of Nigeria, apart from being the most incompetent. Do you have, Nepotism, proof? Do you have proof that he yes, is corrupt? Yes, nepotism is you, corruption. Uh, it, it really has. Yes, yes, yes. Nepotism is a form of corruption. When you do things that are wrong, that are not fair to people, that is part of corruption. It isn't only when you steal money. That is financial corruption. Moral corruption is there too. This is decadence. When you have a situation where every major appointment you make is in favor of people from your ethnic group, that is corruption. That is terrible. And that has disunited Nigeria more than ever before. So when we talk about failure, look at the security situation we have in Nigeria. Nobody's safe. Okay. And what does the president do? Yeah. People are kidnapped. They can't find them. Now you say people shouldn't have money to pay ransom when you cannot save the people who have been kidnapped. 
<laughs> so look, we have failed in so many ways. This okay. administration has failed in so many ways. Okay, let, and let's Dr. Cook, uh, Bishop Cooker talks about the health, mm -hmm. talks about nepotism, talks about the, the idea of a Muslim Muslim ticket, insensitivity in every level. Okay, let, let's get some responses from Mr. Modibo right now, who is in our Abuja studio. Well, Mr. Modibo, you heard him, and of course you are aware of what uh, Bishop Kuka has said. How do you respond? Thank you very much, uh, Ayo and uh, Bola, for inviting me this morning. Happy Xmas and a prosperous New Year in advance. My heart also goes to the family of Bolanle and the NBA and all Nigerians over the sad and unfortunate incident. Having stated this, let me place a caveat that I am here as a dispassionate analyst that is not under the purview or the peril of the government or President Muhammadu Buhari. He has people that could defend him and people that he pays to defend his government. Having stated this, let me say here that I have area of convergence and also area of divergence with the views of Bishop Matthew Cooker over the analysis of the present administration's performance profile. Let me state here without any fear of contradiction that President Muhammad Buhari, when he came in, he had a very patriotic and nationalistic feeling of intervening in the process of good governance of this country. We might agree or disagree that the tripoda structure under which the government had a focus to fight insecurity, tame corruption, and also look at the issues of providing social infrastructure and also opening the floodgate for democratic views as well as free, fair, and credible elections. Has President Muhammad Buhari succeeded? I will say yes, and also I will say no. Now, I will tend to agree with Matthew Cooker to some extent that, look, there has been some challenges here and there, which is normal. There is no country guided by reason that has 100% good governance the world over. Under globalization and multiculturalism, such as ours in Nigeria, in the world over, there have been problems and pro prospects. Even in America, you have challenges of insecurity, challenges of corruption, challenges of development when it comes to the issues of governance. And therefore, Nigeria cannot be an exception. This man came in and found a situation in which Nigeria was buckled under the full weight of ravenous and greedy political class who turned the public treasury, looted the economy, and then made it a kind of predatory instinct on our, on our, on our, on our treasuries. The PDP government left a footprint of corruption, a footprint of uh, Mr. Modibu, underdevelopment. Uh, since you, foot... spoke, you started yes. to speak about um, insecurity, well, one of the things that Father Kuka said, well, Bishop Kuka said, is in this quote that we cut out, in Nigeria today, we bear scars, we bear trauma, we bear deep sorrow today. Our children are still in the forests, in the hands of evil men, but most of them have no names. They are only numbers. Still, he asks us, you know, I mean, uh, Bishop Kuka asks us not, not to give up. So if he, the president has done as well, that's it right there. As, as you say, when it comes to security and exactly where, I mean, would you, we be looking at? When he talks about our children being in the forests, the Daily Trust newspaper keeps a daily count of those who are still in captivity. After 560 days... 11 school girls of FGC Burning Yori are still in captivity. And after 532 days, one student of Bethel Baptist High School, Kujama, is still in captivity. So, how do you respond? It is lamentable, Ayo, that today Nigeria finds itself 
in a situation where we find gross and monumental corruption, spiritually indiscipline, impunity, and also the issue of monumental security challenges that has bedeviled this country here and there. But this security challenge, has it started with the Buhari government? I would say no. It had and citizens died from the down of democracy when this government, the government of PDP came into power in 2019. And therefore, it is a spiraling issue that has gone down and deep into this government. The whole of our, the security challenges, especially the issue of COVID-19 and what have you, now agreed that we have security challenges here and there in this country. There is no country that doesn't have security challenges, including America, as I've stated for the purpose of emphasis. Now, Nigeria finds itself because it came in, there are problems besieging the government here and there, especially that of economy, that of unemployment, that of corruption, and what have you. And therefore, this insecurity is something that cropped up because of the level of poverty of governance and also the poverty of the people and poverty of the mind. Agreed that a lot of people have been hijacked, especially the uh, bandits have carried these people to the forest and whatever. I agree, there are security challenges. And therefore, this government, to be fair to the President Muhammad Buhari's government, I will say that the government has tried very well in terms of provision of infrastructure to the military. There is no government from the down office to right from the, right from the colonial period that has been able to provide monies in trillions to the military to purchase hardware to fight corruption. I don't expect President Muhammad Buhari to put on his uniform as a general and move into the forest. I believe that the security people, especially the military, which is doing very well today, should have gone for on a proactive rather than reactive instances. And today, so, Mr. Modibo, we must commend this government. Don't, don't Whether, forget, excuse Mr. Modibo. Me, let, me, let me learn, Mr. Ayo. Okay. Please, can I learn? Please, Go ahead. Let me just learn. Go ahead. We must today appreciate the fact that if you look at what has happened before the Buhari government, people in here, even here in Abuja, were not sleeping, were two eyes closed. We've been having bombings here and there everywhere. But today, peace and tranquility has returned to, I mean, to, to Abuja and everywhere in the country, especially even in the North is where we have today the general, that Christopher, that has been manning the North East region. Today, the Boko Haram has been pushed to the fringes of, of the Sambila forest, and some of them have even crawled to, to Cameroon. You can see that this peace is returning. But agreed, there are areas, especially Modibo. in southern Kaduna, But when you try, Zampara, when you make an attempt, just a second, when you make an attempt to uh, vindicate the president and you say uh, the military should do what they're supposed to do, don't forget that he's not just president. He's also commander-in-chief of the armed forces. And the armed forces is made up of any force that carries arms. Let's not forget that. There's more to say when we return from this break. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Still extraying Bishop Kuka's message to the president, Dr. Pierce. I mean, you, you've also heard his responses. And he made uh, a statement that, look, these things had a foundation uh, in the PDP days. <coughs> and that, you know, the, the APC is literally playing catch up on some of these mm. things. Do you agree with him to any extent? Well, every... Every new government has to play catch up to the one before. You come into government with the promise to improve on what was before you. When Obasanjo came into government, he came to correct the ills of the military. And uh, in that administration achieved a lot, they improved the uh, economy, paid off Nigeria's debts and so on, uh, brought up new industries like the telecommunications industry improved it, improved the oil sector. So no government is perfect. So he's right. Everybody knows that. For instance, this issue of police brutality, you know, when you were discussing it, something came to my mind, and that is how bad the issue is in America. But what you have in America is simply uh, uh, reaction 
and the way you solve problems, you have problems everywhere. What do you do about the problems? For instance, there is no outrage against police brutality as much as it should be. There is no proper punishment for the police that commit the crime. You talk about NSAS and what we did. NSAS was just after NSAS, after the rebellion, there was just superficial changes. You need more police. Nigeria is under policed. That's part of the problems police have. When a man, one policeman is threatened by 2,000 people, what does he do? He, he panics, he begins to shoot. So we need a lot of improvement. Yes, indeed, uh, the Buhari government made problems, but they made promises. Just as uh, was, uh, Jonathan made, he made problems and he tried to improve. Every government must do their, their turn, they must improve. They must bring about desired change for the society. When Muhammad Buhari came in, he came in with the goodwill that we've never seen before for any president. People expected so much. But those of us who studied, who researched, researched his background, we knew there were going to be problems. When he was chairman of the Petroleum Trust Fund, he was a total failure. So when you now come and you say you want to be president, you want to be president and you make yourself the minister for petroleum, that is why they're stealing us blind in that industry, as they did when he was chairman of the Petroleum government Trust Fund. Was, was, just one second. Mr. It was the Pierce. PDP government that started that process of making the petroleum minister the president. No, no. The point is this. Okay. Let us say that, that uh, PDP government made a mistake. It was wrong. And it is not wrong for any president to make himself oil minister. It depends on what you are. Do you have the experience? What we are saying is that Buhari well, already are, had right. experience but, of failure in the industry. But, but Dr. Pierre, so you, 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 I you knew point... that it would be a problem. And that is the problem we have now. So, you, 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 you're, you're pointed fingers a whole yes. lot, you know, at the current government. But, sure. you know, many Nigerians will say it's, it's same of same. For instance, you accuse the current administration of being corrupt and you, in fact, say nepotism is corruption. You know, but under the immediate past... I did past, not the president... Under the immediate past administration also, in fact, your current candidate accused uh, the uh, former administration of running the client, uh, government of clientelism, of awarding contracts to its cronies. So, uh, is is that also not some type of corruption? Look, what I'm saying is this. The president, I'm not saying the administration is corrupt. Everybody in the administration is not corrupt. This president is corrupt because selective prosecution in the EFCC. That's what he does. People he doesn't like, he, he prosecutes. That is wrong. And anyway, Let's not talk about the past now and what Let's problems Let's talk about the past because have. the past is, is trying to return. The no. immediate past administration no. wants to return as, no, 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 no. The, as the ruling party yet again. So let's talk about the past. The, the it's past, significant for us to talk about the past as well. The, press, the past PDP administration is not trying to return. PDP is a political party. They are individuals who are in the party who are trying to get into government. Absolutely, that's what, what I meant. What did they do when they were in government? And what do you expect them to do now? Let me tell you. So what's going to be different? What is going to be different now is this. If we don't restructure this country, all of these problems will come back again. What we need now is a president who is fully committed to decentralizing government, to making sure that each state has its enough autonomy to be able to deal with its problems. If we don't have that, you're going to have continuously degradation in terms of quality of life for our people. So therefore, that is what is going to be different now. And then, look, what you have in any election is a choice between people, a choice. Now look at what we have in front of us. I'm saying, don't talk about PDP did this in the past and they did that, and you're looking at all the flaws in the past, you're not looking at the achievements. Under the Obasanjo uh, uh, administration, a great deal of achievement. Under the Jonathan administration, the first time in the history of Nigeria, 
We had a GDP that was higher than that of South Africa. We had a, an administration where there were no political prisoners. As and such. indeed, Reverend Father Bishop Kuka also lauds this administration for you know, uh, its infrastructural development as well. Sure. So if you say that the PDP did well, uh, Bishop Kuka has not shied away from acknowledging what this government has done well as well. Yes, they have done well. The, problem, the issue is by comparison. We had problems in the Jonathan administration. The dollar was not won to the Naira. And rice was not inexpensive. Transportation was not inexpensive. But nothing as bad as we have today in terms of quality of life. Daily life is a hell now more than before. All we are saying is every administration must try to make an improvement. A Basanjo administration made an improvement. Jonathan administration made an improvement. What we have in the Buhari administration is a disaster. There has no been improvement in virtually, I give them 20% for the infrastructural development. In the meantime, look at the capital. There is no money to pay staff. Everything is used to pay. We cannot even, all our resources are gone all the oil revenue, and then there's not been the diversification of the economy. This government has failed in the way it's handled the economy and security, right. and in terms of government, fairness in governance. Those three uh, areas. All right. Let's give Mr. Modibo an opportunity to respond to some of the issues that were raised. But while you're doing that, uh, let, let, let me set the tone for it, particularly drawing from Bishop Kuka's letter. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a paragraph from what he wrote to Mr. President. He says, a caste system has emerged in our country. It has consolidated its hold and blunted the cutting edge of all institutions. The majority of its children are swimming against the tide of survival with no support, while the other castes, that would be the halves now, smiles in the comfort of their life jackets. Is this caste system a product of our democratic experience? I'm asking now, or has it always been there? And this speaks particularly to, you know, to the um, heightened gap between the rich and the poor, specifically, yet again, Mr. Modibo, what happened to this administration's national poverty reduction growth scheme that uh, you know was a platform to address the promise of Mr. President to move 100 million Nigerians out of poverty? Thank you very much, uh, Buki, for this wonderful question. You see. Before I move into this wonderful question, let me, for the purpose of emphasis, state that the past is very important. That's why I'm in sync and in tune with the philosophical dictates of George Santayana, who stated that if experience is not retained, infancy is perpetual. Those that forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Therefore, the issue of the past, especially the nuances and the governance of PDP, must be brought into focus. I do not believe, as Nigerians, we should trust Atiku with leadership of this country, or the PDP, for very obvious reasons. If you look at even their campaigns, they are doing their campaigns every time on selling our assets, which has been done under the PDP government in, before. And it was just for their personal enrichment. Every time it's selling assets, every time it's selling assets, not thinking of the wherewithal of turning the fortunes of this country, turning the economy, bringing employment, and also making Nigeria what it is. So now, let me go to your question. Agreed. Nigeria is currently having challenges of corruption, I have stated, in discipline, the issue of insecurity, and also the issue of lack of jobs, and also the economy. Nigeria is one exception. The one over, because of this COVID-19 and other issues, the country has been faced with a lot of challenges that had to do with the economy. Agree corruption is there. Some people are wallowing in abject wealth while others are under the drains. I agree. But there is a need for us to look at the issues dispassionately. I agree with Batu Kuka that, look, these areas need to be examined. That is where my area of convergence. But my area of, of divergence comes here. Whether we like the face of President Muhammadu Buhari or not, he is one man that you cannot point accusing fingers to him as a corrupt person. 
I can bet my life and I can bet my integrity on the line. He is not corrupt as an individual. Now, look at the government. It has performed in terms of provision of social infrastructure. Look at the railway lines that have been I mean, opened. Kaduna, uh, Abuja, Lagos, Ibadan. Look at the network of roads, Atakwe, the railway lines. Look at the issues of, I mean, uh, agricultural social investment programs. There are a lot of social investment programs in which a lot of monies have been sunk so as to bring people out of poverty. But unfortunately, the Nigerian system has been bedeviled by corruption and unmitigated lawlessness. Whilst on two people whom the president has entrusted the capacity of governance have been able to take that into their own pockets. And it's unfortunate. That is where we have a problem. Now, Bishop Matthew Kuka should be sincere. He is looking at issues based on overflow of powerful emotions, which has been misconstrued as basing his own senti I mean, argument based on sentiments of issues of uh, uh, emotions, issue of religion, and issue of politics. And I think this should not be the focal point. We should look at issues of Nigeria's development constructively. I agree. Under this government, Matthew Cook has been very critical. When he was in PDP or when he has been given appointments by Buhari, I mean by Obasanjo and, uh, and uh, Goodluck Jonathan, has he been critical of the governments? I've never had Matthew Kuka challenging those governments because he was involved with the government. But now that he's not in government, he has not been forthcoming, they have never given me any appointment, he's always criticizing the government. Unfortunately, I uh, clergy, just one second, uh, I Mr. Modibo. To see him. Unfortunately, uh, yes. Bishop Kuka is not here to defend himself, and I don't know him as having ever been given an appointment, the way you are putting it. However, you know, that you, you're speaking about uh, criticizing some of the things that he said, which included issues around insecurity. Well, the, the controversial cleric, as he is adjured to be, uh, Sheikh Ahmed Gumi said uh, at some point that Nigerians should not vote for anyone who will fight bandits, which are part of the things that, you know, uh, Father Bishop Kuka talked about. He said the fighters are, are warriors in the forests. Our people in the forest, he said. He said, vote for those who, are af who, after attaining power, will call and negotiate with our people, which are these bandits, so as to give them what they want for peace to reign. Do you agree with that as well? No. I if you look at the issue of Gumi, Gumi is still part of this government. As far as I'm concerned, Gumi is a critic of this government, whether we like it or not. Now... When I talk about Matthew Kuka being in government, I no, mean, no, speak to this particular one. Even the pro, the pro the, panel, yeah. Ayo, look at the pro, look at the, even the pro panel of Puta. He was in need, and he was also co collecting allowances. Mm -hmm. But since this government came in, he has not been featuring anything fundamental that has to do with the government. That's what I'm saying. So he had no stepping stone on which or a fertile ground on which to lay on to criticize that government. And now he's doing it because maybe he's not forthcoming in this government. I'm not defending this government, and as far but as I'm concerned, I'm not the mouthpiece of the Muhammad Bari. But can you fault the Bari. issues but that Bishop Kuka issues... raised? Can you fault the issues that he raised? You say they are emotional, and rightly so. He has to speak with uh, congregants on a daily basis, even non-congregants of his, of his own church, who go through these things on a daily basis. So that's one cleric saying that and criticizing issues that concern people, because at the end of the day, hey, who is not sentimental or emotional about issues that concern his economy or personal security. Everyone is, I bet you are as well. But then look at the, the, the one that I just told you now about, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, Shigumi that you just said, you know, he's also part of the government. Is that in anything, any way, a valid statement for him to make? Do you think it is something government or anyone seeking office should give credence to? What I'm saying here, Ayo, is that Chegumi is not part of this government. He is not a member of APC, and I do not believe that he's part of this government. He's always been very critical on the negative side of this government. He has not been in sync with this government. I'm not defending the Buhari government. I agree. That's why I said I have some areas of convergence and also area of divergence with Matthew Kuka's uh, 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 postulations. Agreed. There are a lot of things that he said are based on facts. And also there are some areas that he needs to also give this government credit, especially in areas of provision of social infrastructure. Look at even the third, I mean, the... the, the but Mr. Uh, Modibo, he, he, he did bridge, that in the second letter. Second Niger Bridge. 
He did that in the letter. He acknowledged, he acknowledged the achievement of this administration in the area of infrastructure. But has he been able to single them out for exceptional, I mean, analysis? The, it has all been underburied, or it has all been buried by the negativities, the negative aspects of, of this government. And I think, as a cleric, he should be dispassionate. He should not allow overflow of sentiments and emotions to override the sense of reasoning. So the, what I'm saying but, is, but, agreed. But perhaps, I, perhaps, uh, uh, Mr. That Modibo, position, perhaps that is because you know yes. the the odds perhaps outweigh. Uh, you know, the, the benefits that have come from infrastructure development. Uh, wouldn't you agree that Nigerians are united uh, on the fact that, you know, um, there's a, a big concern about insecurity, there's a big concern about the economy, there's a big concern about, you know, um, inflation? The, the most, the most uh, outstanding and worthy uh, narrative of this administration is the fact that, look, we must agree as Nigerians that there are areas of fundamental flaws where this government has not performed. I have stated over, and let me for the purpose of emphasis state, that this government has to a large extent failed in some of the areas, fundamental areas of corruption, the issue of provision of insecure, I mean security. Although we must give it credit that it has done very well in terms of security. Now, if we look at the issues of provision of social infrastructure, the third mainland bridge, I mean the, 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 I mean, the second Niger bridge, even for the IPO people, they must commend this government for building that bridge, you know, which has, I mean, eased up the traffic we've seen during the Christmas period. And also there are a lot of areas where we have development projects that are continuing. But the issue of insecurity, it has hit this government below the belt. And I'm sure that whoever wants to fundamentally look at the issues dispassionately will tell you that this government has failed to a very large extent on the issue of insecurity. And this fellow is arising from a kind of uh, global perspective of insecurity. There's insecurity everywhere, and therefore Nigeria should not be seen as one that is perfect, especially with developing uh, population, with developing uh, uh, problems of insecurity, I mean, uh, lack of jobs and what have you, and also with the development of poverty. Therefore, this government has done to a large extent very well, which I want to believe that Matthew Kuka should have addressed to state that, look, these are areas that this government has done very well, but they are, there's a need for this government to also look at social, social issues. But come here to state blankly, I mean, point blank, well, blankly, that it has woefully, I mean, it, it, the uh, government of President Mohamed Wari is leaving these uh, governors of this country far more worse than it made it, I do not agree. Because I want to believe that there are a lot of areas that we have to commend this government, and there are also a lot of areas of failures. I'm not speaking for this government, and I don't have anything to do or being paid to do this for this government, but I want to look at the issues from a very nationalistic and patriotic viewpoint, so that government as a continuum should have been able to get people that will come in in 2023 to build from where the uh, Obasanjo Good luck, Jonathan, Yaradua, and Buhari stop, so that it will move, so, so as to check some of these fundamental problems that we've uh, associated with the government of this country. Mm -hmm. Whether okay. we like it or not, yeah. Buhari well, has made his mark. Well, and therefore, there, there's a lot has been said already, uh, Mr. Modibo, but the PDB, we are running out The PDP of, should of not time. be trusted with power, because well, they will sell our assets. Final words, the PDP should he, not be trusted he's just with power said that, because I mean, the PDP should not assets. be power, you know, trusted with power, because uh, the PDP is going to sell our assets. Well... That issue of selling the assets, let me address that because a lot of people are concerned. Atiku wants uh, a private sector driven economy. This is what happens about selling assets. It's not as if you are giving away assets. You sell a company, you make a company uh, that is run by government, now private. What that, what that means is you want to make it more efficient so that it can be more productive, so that it can improve in terms of employment. This is the problem we have in this country. It's not only here. You have socialists who always say everything will be run by government. Wow. We have seen that it's a failure. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about privatization, mm -hmm. what it means is that you're looking for efficiency, as we know. If it wasn't for the private sector, 
we would have all be eating sand today. Okay. <laughs> the well, reason why we are still surviving is yeah. because of the private sector. Well, because well, of their the focus on on efficiency and productivity. There is a lot of questions around that one because yeah. it was under the PDP government that the um, electricity sector, for instance, was privatized or decentralized, as you may want, whichever way you want to put it, and we know what we are. It was taken over that. again by government people who came in and bought the shares. So then that's how what do we know that the privatization from your party is going to go the way it's intended? Well, we can't really answer all the questions right now. <laughs> uh, Dr. Adetokumbo Pierce is member PDP Presidential Campaign Council and Lagos State Coordinator at the Kokoa Presidential Campaign Support Groups. Thank you so much for your time this That's morning. Thanks for having me. As well as Ibrahim Modibo, a public affairs analyst who joins us from our studio in Abuja. Thank you so much for your time today.